Welcome to part two of the Industrial Revolution. Now we're going to take a look at European industrialization. So why is it that Europe was the first to uh, go through this industrial revolu revolution, specifically Britain? We'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Well, there was four major contributing factors that led to an industrial revolution in Britain that moved on to Belgium, France, the Rua Valley, and then eventually Northern Italy. First of all was raw materials, <clears throat> okay? Europe had the fortunate happenstance to have a plethora of the raw materials that are requisite for the type of industrial revolution that's gonna happen, right? This mechanization process, okay? In the 18th century, this will be coupled with an agricultural revolution, right? The 18th century is gonna be a period of of advancements in agriculture that's going to lead to a population explosion, right? Um, so you have an increase in food supply, you got increased, uh, you got better hygiene, you have the development of inoculation and vac vaccination, which is increasing lifespans, which is increasing your population. And with increased population, of course, comes increased demand. You need more things, right? You have a larger population, you have more things that are desired. And also with that increased population, you have an enlarged labor force in which to produce these things. So you have a, a perfect storm. These raw materials, this increase of population, this increased demand, and this new uh, uh, effort to try and find some way to meet those demands. Now, of these European nations, the first one to industrialize is going to be Great Britain. Why was Great Britain first? Well, along with those four initial prerequisites, it had four others that helped spur this along. First of all, it had plenty of capital, right? The uh, British Society of the Enlightenment created a commercial and financial revolution that allowed Britain to have uh, plenty of capital and plenty of methods to raise capital in order to build factories and those things are gonna be requisite for an industrial revolution. They have a hands-off government, right? A, the British government was very laissez-faire when it came to its economic po policies. There weren't a lot of obstacles to entrepreneurship or creativity. There's very little government regulation in industry, unlike the other, like the monarchies on the continent. Like for example, in France, the perfume industry was controlled by the government, right? This is, you know, you don't have industries controlled by the government in Great Britain. Uh, Adam Smith actually will write about this in 1776. You know, when he talks about the governments uh, or the economic the economies prosper the best when left alone. We'll talk about that in more detail later, right? Uh, British and, well, Dutch culture too, but British culture had a lot of social mobility, right? British merchants and financiers, that middle, middle class, that, that group that falls outside the, the unseen regime, uh, have a little bit more uh, mobility in uh, British societies than they do, again, in some of the more stauncher monarchies in Europe, right? The British, British society is uh, the least hierarchical of all the European nations. And so these middle class merchants believe they're living in a free and open uh, country. So perhaps because of these three preconditions here, you had in the, in the, uh, in the late 18th or the mid, mid to late 18th and 19th centuries, Britain is gonna produce a whole series of innovators, right? That are going to reinvent systems, right? The men that are gonna be requisite in order to actually advance this industrial revolution, right? Um, so when we begin to take a look at these industries, we're gonna see they build upon each other. Every time you can have an advancement, it's gonna require some kind of thing to make it easier for that advancement. And you have like a, a cascading effect, effect that will follow that we'll kind of go over here in some detail. <clears throat> 